high. So despite the amount of challenge or adversity or discomfort that I put myself through when I go through these really big races or even when I was within the military is that on the other side of immense discomfort or immense challenge, there's transformation. So when I go into Alaska next year and I, if I'm successful at covering a thousand miles, during that period, there's going to be the requirement to go through persistence, as I've spoken about. I'm going to have to be able to endure for up to 30 days or even longer, depending on what goes on. There's resistance associated with it. So I'm going to have to resist everything that that environment throws at me, everything that goes wrong, all the internal disruption, my mind screaming at me during the middle of the night with fatigue, with being tired, with being hungry, with being sore, trying to tell me to stop and quit. I'm going to have to resist everything internally and externally about trying to make me stop. I'm going to have to make sure that I have recovery built in there so that I can recover from day to day so I can get those adaptations that I've spoken about previously, particularly around the climatization and adapting my equipment and the way I do things as I go based around my day to day challenges and my levels of fatigue and recovery but at the end of it ultimately i'm going to get transformation and transformation is what's going to allow me to ultimately or basically be a much better person or a better equipped person on the other side to meet discomfort so transformation is the last process in these five processes that are associated with resilience and it's not just this event that i'm going to have some transformation from because the reality is on the other side of this, I'm just not gonna be exactly the same person. I'm gonna have a better understanding of what I'm capable of. I'm gonna have a better understanding of how I function in these really, really extreme periods where I'm under such high levels of fatigue, hunger and pain and discomfort. And I'm just gonna have more mental skills. I'm just gonna be more capable and my tolerance for discomfort is gonna be far in excess of what it is now. But to get here, I've had to put myself through a lot of discomfort previously as well. So when I went through the selection process previously, again, I had to use all the same principles or the same principles were associated with my ability to succeed. So I went through, I persisted through the selection course. I resisted all the ex in external influences and the deliberate attempts to try and make me quit. Okay, I had periods in there where I had recovery. At the end, I adapted to it, or as I was going, I adapted to the day-to-day -day running of it to improve my chances to go through it. And then on the other side of it, I was put into an environment where I transformed. So it would be quite easy to say, or I'm very confident, or I'd be able to confidently say that if I didn't do selection 20 plus years ago, I would not be the same person I am now. I just would not have been exposed to the same things. I would have had a different trajectory. I wouldn't have the same capacities. I wouldn't have the same mental skills. I wouldn't have the same experience. I just wouldn't be the same person because I would have gone through a different transformation. So on the other side of all this challenge and adversity and all these things we go through, in a lot of cases, if they're things that we've taken on deliberately, we can become the person that we're hoping to be. And that's through that transformation stage. In contrast, if we avoid everything and we, uh, if we try and avoid, in contrast, though, if we try and avoid everything, things are going to be imposed upon us. And on the other side of that, we're going to have some level of transformation, and it may be positive. It may not be positive. We just can't be certain as to how we're going to transform. But if we want to be able to improve who we are and become better, and this works in the same within the ecosystems or environment or the culture that we're in, we need to inject the right interventions, the right challenges, create the environment so that we can transform from what it is to where we want it to go. And one of the principles with this as well is that you, we have to know how, when to test and adjust and when to pivot what we're doing. So we need to be able to determine when we're moving in the right direction and when we need to pivot and change our approach a little bit. But ultimately, if we want to improve our resilience and transform ourselves into a more resilient person, then we need to understand all the processes I've spoken about previously and be willing to expose ourselves to some challenge, to some difficult situations and understand on the other side, we're going to be a better person. We're gonna transform into the person we want. We're gonna improve all these things I've spoken about and our life's gonna become a lot easier. And then ultimately, we're gonna be able to confront higher level challenges with a reasonable level of comfort and confidence and be able to go through them with much better skills. And then again, on the other side of those, there'll be some transformation again. So we can continue to improve our ability as long as we're willing to confront discomforts and the things that we need to confront. So 
that's the last in the five processes that have been associated with resilience okay and then from here i'm going to move on with a few other different concepts theories and talk about some research so i hope that's kind of helped going through the, those five processes i hope you're starting to put some of those into practice and then you can start to look at how you're going to transform from where you are to where you want to be using those principles so i hope you're able to take something away from that and it's been able to start to improve your life and the direction it's heading